In this video, I'm gonna give you some tips on how to identify migratory songbirds coming up right after this. Hello guys, I am back, Adventure Ed, as you guys know me on YouTube. Uh, by the way, in case some of you didn't know, my real name is Eddie, my nickname. Actually, my formal name is Edward, but you can call me whatever you want. Yeah, I have posted barely any content in the past six months, and maybe some of you are wondering why, and uh, just begs the question, where have I been? The truth is, to put it simply, life just happened. I've uh, been really busy with some things that involve my professional life, um, my uh, my real career. Um, you know, YouTube is just a fun thing that I do on the side, and uh, I just didn't have any time to do anything with YouTube the past six months, but fortunately, now I have a lot more free time, um, starting pretty much today. So, I'm very happy to make some videos, and I figured the first video that uh, I, I needed to make once I had more time was a video about spring migration with birds and I want to give you guys some tips on how to identify migratory songbirds because the majority of birds uh, that you can find in my own country in the United States are migratory and there's many species of migratory birds across the world and many of them are small songbirds uh, birds that uh, might be challenging to identify in some ways. Um, they might be challenging to find in some ways. And um, if you use some strategies, then uh, you know it can really make it easier to both find them during migration and to identify them. And by the way, for anyone who has not seen my channel before, uh, just to give you a little bit of background, my name is Eddie, I'm a biologist, and I am a pretty keen birder and I like looking for wildlife, photographing wildlife. So yeah, if you wanna learn about bird watching and other things about nature, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And also, I just wanna say as well, my channel has continued to grow in the past six months, even when I haven't produced any content. So I just wanna thank everyone who has watched the videos and subscribed and commented. It really means so much to me because uh, it just feels good to reach out to the YouTube community and be a part of it and I will always be making videos whenever I can and I will definitely be making YouTube videos till the day I die because this is my hobby and it's what I really love to do. So now for our first tip to help you find and identify migratory songbirds is you need to really pay attention to the weather patterns. The migration of birds every year, it's not the exact same. How birds will migrate in any given year really has to do with the specific weather patterns. And if you think about a bird migrating, it's a really challenging task. Like it's amazing what these little birds like the, that can fit in the palm of your hand, what they can do. They can fly thousands of miles in such a short amount of time. Even a bird that's wintering in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico and flying across the Gulf of Mexico to Texas, I mean, it's just so amazing to think that a little warbler or a little bunting or whatever can fly that whole way without touching down at all. They need all the help they can get when they're migrating. And one thing that can really help them when they're migrating is a tailwind. So birds really migrate using like the weather pattern. So generally birds will be migrating when the wind's going at their backs, but then all of a sudden if that wind direction shifts, then that's when they will uh, touch down on land. If they're above land, yeah, they'll rest, they'll uh, eat and refuel, and then once the wind starts going at their back again, then they'll continue to migrate. It doesn't only have to be a shift in wind direction, it can also be a storm. For bird migration in North America, if there's a wind that's going north at a pretty decent speed, and then if all of a sudden there's a bunch of thunderstorms that come into a given area, that is a recipe for what many birders and also scientists regard as a fallout. And that's when birds will practically fall out of the sky because what happens is you have all these birds migrating, they hit the storm and they just don't wanna go anywhere so they just all drop down uh, to the nearest point on land. 
So let's say you're trying to decide which day you want to go birding and you have an option to choose a day out of the week. Well, if there's a day where there's a southerly wind, so that means a wind coming from the south, the next day there's like a storm system that's just to the north of you, then maybe the day after that storm system comes through would be a good time to go birding or maybe like on that same day but like later in the afternoon. If a storm system is south of you, then that actually might stop the birds to the south of you, so you might not see that much where you are. But this long explanation leads me to my next tip, which is just to go onto this website that Cornell has. Um, they call it the Cornell Birdcast, where real scientists use the weather patterns and all of their knowledge about bird migration. They're experts, they're expert scientists on bird migration. They put out um, a forecast about bird migration, and it's I guess probably the best forecast that anyone could do on bird migration because they're experts. So you actually don't really even need to do that much research into the weather yourself. It's really interesting. And by the way, I'll put that website in the link below this video. So my next tip is to pay attention to the layout of the land. Oftentimes places on coasts, if there's like a patch of suitable habitat, patch of suitable migratory stop over habitat on a coast. That might be a really good place to see migratory birds when they're stopping to take a rest. Some examples of these places are Cape May in New Jersey, High Island in Texas, and uh, Point Pelee, which I believe that's what they call it, which is in Canada. I've never been there, but I hear it's an amazing spot. I'll just use High Island in Texas as an example. What happens is you have all these birds migrating uh, over the Gulf of Mexico uh, from the Yucatan Peninsula. When there is a change of direction and wind, then they're gonna stop down most likely at the first piece of suitable habitat that they see. So all these migratory birds in a certain distance are all gonna be funneled to High Island. It is really interesting though, because again, the weather patterns matter so much. Uh, I lived in Texas for a couple years. I went to High Island on one weekend and it was the only weekend that I could actually go there during the spring. I didn't have a choice. The wind was going the wrong direction and I just really didn't see that much. But the week before, when I couldn't go, unfortunately, there was just a massive fallout because there was a storm system that came through. But one other thing I will say is that you don't have to be in one of those really famous places like High Island or Point Pelee to get a lot of migratory birds. Because again, like I just said, you could go there if the weather's wrong, it can be really bad. Even if you're in like a lesser known place, if the weather conditions are right, you can have an amazing day and see lots of migratory birds. One place that is really well situated on the coast in New Hampshire is called Ordinary Point State Park. I feel like most birders in North America, at least birders who aren't that serious, have probably never heard of it, but I've been there when the weather conditions have been right, and I've seen like over 30 species of warblers in one morning. And um, by the way, I'm gonna make another video about beginning photography tips for songbirds. Another tip that I have is if you're in a spot with a lot of stopover migratory warblers or whatever, use the sit and wait strategy with birds because oftentimes if you're approaching a songbird, it'll fly away. <laughs> However, with migratory birds that are just stopping in a location and refueling to go migrate somewhere else, while they're you know in that stopover place, they're probably really exhausted. Oftentimes, they're just not as alert. They're not as skittish. A lot of times, it's just easier just to stay in one place, stay still. Because they're not as alert, they'll often just come to you. There's been times when I've had warblers just kind of hop right up to my ankles, and that's pretty darn cool. So my next tip is one thing that you should know uh, when you're identifying migratory songbirds is you should know how to identify the females. Most species of migratory songbirds have sexual dimorphism and the male is clearly the more attractive one usually. Many people are so focused on the males, photographing the males that they just forget about the females. What could happen is that you could have a female warbler in migration and not have another male around. Um, again, I keep on saying warblers, but you know, any other type of migratory songbird, you might actually see a species and miss that identification that um, which you actually should have gotten it if you would have paid more attention to the female. And this is kind of along the same lines, but also remember that juveniles might look significantly different. So just remember that you know how to identify them as well. Now the next thing I will say is it's really good to get out first thing in the morning with songbirds especially. You know with other types of birds like seabirds, shorebirds, ducks, 
you usually don't need to be out at dawn, but with songbirds, they're absolutely generally the most active at the beginning of the day. And then also the other thing that you can do is just keep in touch with other birders about when birds are migrating. So, you know, why not use your resources, whether it's connections on social media or whatever email listserv you're a part of, to find out what birds are showing up where so you can go look for them. So my last few pieces of advice are really for the more advanced birders. And one of them is try getting good at identifying parts of birds. So whether you can identify a bird just by seeing its head or seeing part of its wing or its backside, the thing about songbirds is they move so quick and they're often in uh, like trees and branches, leaves and stuff that it's oftentimes hard to get a picture of it and it's also hard to see the whole bird. So if you can do that, then you'll be much better off at identifying songbirds. And then also practice identifying songbirds by their chip calls, okay? So a chip call is just the one note call. Obviously with songbirds, you wanna be able to identify them by their song. The thing is when birds are migrating and stopping over in a place, a lot of times they won't even be singing. Many of those birds won't even start singing until they reach their breeding grounds. Just try to know all the vocalizations of birds, but you really know that you're an expert once you know those chip calls. All right guys, thank you for watching. Again, I'm gonna make another video on um, advice for beginner photographers who are trying to photograph migratory songbirds. Well guys, I gotta go, cause I gotta go edit this video, cause I got to get to bed early, cause you probably can guess what I'm gonna do early tomorrow morning.